Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to Lady and Crochets. If you're new to this channel, my name is Liz and in this tutorial we're going to make this beautiful, beautiful pair of pants. It's a patchwork pair of pants and I totally enjoyed making this and I hope you're going to enjoy it. If you're not subscribed, kindly subscribe and let's get into the tutorial. If you'd like to watch the tutorial for the corset top, I'm going to leave a link in the description box so be sure to click on it and watch the tutorial to the top. You will need several colors of yarn and I'll be using these shades of purple, um, 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, stitch markers, around six of them, and a measuring tape. So this is the pattern in which I'll use the colors. You're going to need the following measurements, your thigh measurement, that is you're going to measure the widest part of your thigh. Please note that you're not going to use the hip measurements, but the thigh measurements. So mine is 21 and I want to have three strips. You can have two or four. So once you get the thigh measurement, in order to get three strips, you're going to take the thigh measurement divided by three. And in my case, it's 21 divided by three, which is seven inches. If you want two strips, you can take 21 divided by two to get 10.5. Then you're going to need the full length of your trouser. You're going to need the fly measurement. And of course, we're using a hook of 3.5. Begin with a slip knot and you're going to make a chain that will give us seven inches or whatever measurement you've gotten after dividing your thigh measurements by three. So I'm chaining 20. So 20 gives me the 7 inches, we can confirm this by measuring. When I stretch it out a little bit, it goes up to 8, uh, up to 7 that is. So that's my starting chain. We begin row 1 by holding the 20th stitch and chaining one more. Then yarn over, put the hook into the chain that you're holding, yarn over and grab a loop. You're going to have 3 loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all the three loops to complete a half double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over, put your hook into the next chain, grab a loop, then yarn over, pull through the three loops. Then we're going to place one half double crochet into every chain till you get to the end of the chain. At the end of the chain, you should have 20 half double crochets or the same number of stitches that you've started chaining with. So just one half double crochet into every stitch. I'm in the last chain and I'll be placing my last half double crochet into that chain and row one is done. Chain one and turn to begin row two. We begin row two in the first stitch with one half double crochet. You can see the stitches, so yarn over and put your hook into the first stitch, then do a half double crochet, do a half double crochet into the next stitch, then into the third and all the way to the end of row two. Make sure you don't miss out any stitch and to ensure that you count your stitches. So I'm in the last stitch, so I'm just going to yarn over, put my hook into that last stitch and do a half double crochet. That's the end of row two, chain one and turn to begin row three. Begin in the first stitch with a half double crochet and then place one half double crochet into all the stitches to the end. 
so this is what you're going to be doing for the next 20 rows just placing one half double crochet into every stitch I'll work my 20 rows then I'll be back and we're going to continue from there I'm done with the 20 rows and my first patch is done so what I'll do is chain one and cut off the yarn at that point then pull through and fasten we're going to get the second color and do the second patch so get the yarn and reattach so you're just going to turn your work to the other side then put your hook into the first stitch and then you're going to grab a loop of the next color like that then chain one we're going to work over these ends after chaining one you're going to start in that first stitch with a half double crochet while working over these two ends then into the next stitch do one half double crochet then into the next one and all the way to the end of row 21 So that's row 21 done which is the first row of the second color then you're going to chain one and turn and begin row 22 or row 2 of this shade and you're going to work a total of 20 rows with the color we've reattached and that should get you to a total of 40 rows once you're done with the 40 rows you're going to chain one and cut off the yarn and then reattach the next color so the patches are each going to be a total of 20 rows and you're going to work the patches till you get the full length of the trouser that you're working so i'll keep going changing my colors and then once i'm done i'll be back and show you how many patches i'll have worked to complete one strip of the pants because i divided my my thigh measurements by three i'll be working three strips that will be able to give me the thigh measurement when combined together So these are my patches after i've reattached all the colors i started with these followed by as you can see then this other one this was the fourth one once you're done with the fourth or that the last color that you have you're going to begin with the one that you started with and that's what i've done now at the end i did not do a total of 20 rows because i had already hit my measurement so i did I 
I did a total of 14 in the last patch. And this gives me a length of 40. When you're measuring the length, you measure without stretching. So you can measure this and see the full length that you've achieved. And as you can see, I'm at 40 inches. If you want it a bit longer, you could do this panel with complete 20 rows. Now next, we're going to begin the next patch. And for the next patch, we begin with the second color, followed by the third, followed by this, and then we repeat to the end. So I'll work two other panels, then I'll be back once I'm done with them. You can call them panels or strips. So this is the first panel or the first strip. I'll work the second and the third. Now just make sure that you have a pattern, your desired pattern. You, des you don't have to work exactly the same way I'm working. So right here, I have my three panels. And as you can see, I introduced another shade of purple. I found some piece of yarn lying around, so I put it. So I put it there. But it doesn't matter the colors that you work with, provided you have your three panels. And then you have a particular pattern. As you can see, that's the pattern I've created with the strips. Now next, we're going to attach the strips together. And to do that, we start with the first and the second. We attach them together. Then we're going to attach the third and the fourth. I'll be using this. This is the shade that I'll be using. And so I'm going to need the dani needle. I forgot to mention that you're going to need the tapestry needle or the dani needle. And I'll just put some, some yarn into it. Yarn that I know that can sew all the way from the bottom to the top of the trouser. So just put some yarn into your tapestry needle. Then at this point you're going to need stitch markers. So just put this aside and get stitch markers to mark points. In order to ensure that you're attaching your work the right way, get your stitch markers. Then I'm going to get the beginning of the second patch and the beginning of the second patch on the other side. Pin them together. This makes the, the sewing very easy and it makes sure that your work is aligned. Then I'm going to mark at the end of the second patch, the beginning of the third and the beginning on the third on the other side. And keep marking. And finally, I'll mark the last, the last row and the last row on the other side. Mark them together, put them together like that. So once you've pinned everything together, now you start sewing. So just grab your yarn needle and put it through the first row and the first row on the other side. Then what I do is a knot at the beginning, another knot. So then I go into the first row on the other side, that row alone, put your, your needle into that row, then put your needle onto this other row on the other side. Then onto the second and onto this other side. Then you'll just keep going like this. You work in one row and then onto the other row on the other side like this. Now you can sew however you feel is okay for you. The point is to join the two strips together. And it doesn't matter how you sew, provided 
your work is well aligned. Once you get to the stitch marker, pull it out and keep going to the next one. Now at this point, this is what I have. So I'll just go on joining till I get to the end. Once you get to the end, you're going to make a knot at that point. Then weave in the end that remains onto the stitches. Then you can cut off whatever remains after weaving in. And those two strips are joined together. This is what we have. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. Now get the third one and mark the same way we marked the first and the two. So you want to join them. At this point, So now after marking you're going to get your darning needle and join so i'll go ahead and join this part then i'll be back once the three pieces are joined together my three panels are joined together this is what we have now you're going to turn to fold your work make sure that you're on the wrong side of so this is one leg of the pants so make sure you're on the wrong side fold your work into two like this and then you're going to measure out the the fly on this side so get your measuring tip and we get the fly we measure it while stretching our work and we want to get to 12 so the fly is 12 inches the 12 inches is standard for size small to medium so stretch out your work and mark 
the 12 inch the 12 inch mark at this point so now you're going to count the number of stitches on this side then do the same on the other side and join those two so from here i can tell i'm from one two three so into the fourth one And then on the other side, one, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four, right there. Now then again, you're going to get the other stitch markers and mark like we were marking the other rounds. Now, when we're joining, we're going to join from this point all the way, and then we're going to leave this part open. The part where we've measured out the fly is going to remain open, so we'll join till we get to this point. So I'll just grab my yarn and the dani needle, start joining from the bottom, and then leave out this part open. So I've joined up to this point, and this is the upper part of the trouser. Now I'm done with one leg, and I'm just going to work another three strips completely identical to this and join them the same way we've joined. Then after that, I'll attach the two legs together. So at this point, I'll not cut off the end because my other leg is already done and I already cut off the end. We're going to use this yarn to attach the two legs together. These are my two, my two legs. Now I'll just turn this to the other side so that it faces the two parts that are open should be facing each other and then we're going to mark get the stitch marker and mark the middle parts so we're going to join at that point we'll start joining the two the two legs at that middle part like that then we'll have the parts at the bottom we're going to join them together so i'll mark like that then the parts on top these ones we are also going to, to join them together and this is going to form the trouser now For this beginning part, I actually don't really need the stitch marker. I'll just pull it out. Then I'll put my yarn through the middle part on one side and through the middle part on this other side. Then I'll start working onto the row, the first row, then the first row on this other side. Then I'll just keep going, joining these two to the top.
at that point let it just make a note to this end right here make another knot then weave the end that remains Then cut off whatever remains and leave one side of the pans is joined now you're just going to turn your work to the other side and beginning from the middle part you're going to join to the top both sides of my pants are joined and now we have the complete trouser what's remaining is to work the waistband so to work the waistband, you're going to turn the trouser to the right side. Then for the waistband, I'll be working with this shade only. You can decide to work with all the shades, like reattach the yarn. On each of the patches, you can reattach the color that looks like the patch where you're working on. But I'll only work with this color. So I'll just grab my yarn and the hook. So I'm going to reattach the yarn at the middle, at the back part, right here, on that stitch. And I'm attaching from the inside of the trouser. I want to work one row of single crochet from the inner part of the trouser. So once you reattach chain one, and place a single crochet into that stitch then i'm working over this end i'm going to go to the next stitch and place a single crochet single crochet next into the next stitch and we're going to work a single crochet row all around the waist part of the trousers So you're just working a single crochet into every stitch. Whatever ends you have on top, work on them. I'm in the last stitch and I just do a single crochet into it then do a slip stitch on top of the first single crochet that we did slip stitch then chain 10 then chain one more and turn your work like this We'll start in the second stitch and we're going to work into this stitch. That's the second one. We're going to work a slip stitch into it. So a slip stitch, you put your hook into the stitch, yarn over, grab a loop, and then yarn over, pull through. That's the second slip stitch. We're going to do a third one. Do a slip stitch into the fourth stitch and into all the stitches for a total of 10 slip stitches. I forgot to mention that we are working the slip stitches in the back loops only. So just work your 10 slip stitches down to where we started chaining. Now after the 10th stitch we're going to Hold your work like this. Your chain originated from this stitch, so we won't work into this stitch. We'll work into the next one. Do a slip stitch into it and a slip stitch into the next stitch. 
then turn. After we turn, we work in the back loops, beginning from the first stitch right here. Put your hook in the back loop, then yarn over and slip stitch into the next back loop. Do a slip stitch, do a slip stitch into the next back loop and into all the back loops. This is row two at the end of row two. Make sure that you have 10 slip stitches. On top, we don't work in the back loop, we work on both loops in the last stitch. That is the 10th stitch when going to the top part. So work a slip stitch into the both loops at that end, chain one, and turn. So we begin on both loops on the top part, then start working the back loops. After the tenth, you're going to move to the next stitch. We've already worked into this, so we move into the next and do a slip stitch. Then do a slip stitch into the one that follows and turn your work. Start in the back loop of the first stitch from this end. Work a total of nine slip stitches. So we have one up to nine in the back loops. Now the tenth one goes into the both loops. So instead of working here, we work right there. Chain one and turn to begin the next row. As we come from the top, we work in the first stitch, both loops. All the other stitches, back loops. Those are my 10, then the next stitch, slip stitch once, then slip stitch into the next stitch, and turn. We begin in the back loop from this side. Work for 9 slip stitches, then in the last one, work in the both loops. And this is what we're going to repeat till we go all the way around the waist part and come back to this last stitch right here. If you're struggling with the slip stitches, you can switch to single crochets, but in the back loops too. So I'm in the last stitch and I'll go into the both loops. Chain one, turn, and continue, continue. I'll work my slip stitches all the way around and I'll be back to show you how to complete that round of the waistband.
at this point I've placed a row of slip stitches into each of the rows from the single crochet row into each of the stitches that is and now we need to join these two ends together in order to complete the round so what you do is just turn your work like this hold the end side by side and then we're going to do a slip stitch chain one first beginning the first stitch in the back loop and into the both loops of the other stitch on the other side and complete a slip stitch there do a stitch in the back loop of the second stitch and go into the both loops of the second stitch on the other end and do a slip stitch into the third stitch on this side in the back loop both loops on the other side then slip stitch and do this till you have a total of 10 stitches In the last stitch we work in the back loop in the in the both loops of both sides then chain one and cut off the yarn at that point that the waistband is ready and at this point we are done with the pants you're going to try them on and if you feel like the waist is still too big you can do a drawstring and attach it all the way around the waistband